Hi everyone, welcome to this first video in the F -sharp basic series. In this video, we will look at an introduction to F -sharp. What is F -sharp? F -sharp is a general purpose functional first programming language built on top of the .NET framework. Um, it was developed in 2005 by Don Syme while he was at Microsoft Research and uh, it's fully open sourced and currently managed by the F -sharp Software Foundation. Okay. Um, I know most people are thinking, um, I thought Microsoft owned F -sharp. They kind of do and kind of don't. Actually, what did, what happens is Microsoft has an implementation called the Visual F -sharp, And that Visual F -sharp implementation is essentially the one that most people use. So in the past, there used to be like two separate versions. There used to be one by Mono and one by um, Microsoft. But what happened over the years was that Microsoft acquired Mono. So, yeah, I can just say it's all Microsoft now. But um, F -sharp essentially is just a specification, and you know anyone could implement that specification. It's fully open source. So if we if we look at all the points raised, right, if we talk about functional first programming language. What do we mean by functional first? Well, to fully understand that, you have to first understand what functional programming is. Um, what it means is that F -sharp does virtually everything, can do object oriented and all that, but it focuses mainly on the functional aspect, in other words, building applications using um, functional programming. So the question is, what is functional programming? Well, <laughs> simply put, it's just programming with functions, but more importantly, it's programming with mathematical functions. So a function is just a piece of logic that has an input and an output. So it has an input and it has a definite output. So a function essentially just maps an input to an output. Okay, so you have input in and output out. So, but understanding this as the basic building block of how you write programs is essentially what makes functional programming so powerful because just the same way you can have inputs and outputs, you can just treat functions the way you treat um, every other object or abstraction or whatever. And then you could pass functions around, functions could be the output of other functions and stuff like that. And you can contrast this with uh, OOP, where the basic building block is essentially an object. Um, in functional programming, the basic building block is a function. And um, to fully understand this, I think it's important to understand uh, the, li the lineage of F sharp. You see, F sharp essentially comes from, you know, a different world entirely. And the best way to look at it is that, you see, in the past, in the 70s, right, um, we had the language called C. And it was um, imperative, it was procedural and whatnot. And the ideas from C were what we were taking and morphed into C++, right? C++ added object orientation and all that. Then Java took the ideas of C++ and, you know, added some newer features and whatnot. And then Microsoft comes along with um, .NET and essentially they wanted a version of Java that runs on .NET. And they actually implemented one with uh, J++, but some microsystems sued them for it. So they had to now essentially come up with their own, in quote, clone of Java. And that's how you have C Sharp. So in many ways, Java and C Sharp share a, a lot in common, right? In fact, you could um, roughly approximate C Sharp as Java.net, right? In the flip side, in the functional world, um, one of the first um, functional languages in the 70s was this language called the Meta Language or Standard ML. And uh, it was a very powerful language and it was designed to essentially manipulate um, other languages, or so, something like that. So, but just the same way in the parallel world we had C, here we had the, uh, we had ML. And then ML was what um, gave birth to uh, CAMO, which stands for Categorical Abstract Me Meta Language, essentially, which was, it took the ideas of ML and, you know, improved upon it. Then ML, CAMO, now became OCAMO, when um, object orientation was added to it, so you can think of that object-oriented CAMO. And then, you know, Don Simon, his peers at Microsoft Research, wanted to have an implementation of 
come on on .net, and that's how f sharp was born so in many ways f sharp is you could say okamo.net the same way c sharp is java.net now sure java and c sharp are very different different languages and okamo and f sharp are also very different languages but it gives you a very you know rough idea of what to expect when you're dealing with um f sharp and also it, it makes you also notice that um, f sharp and c sharp are essentially just uh, step brothers in the sense that in a lot of ways they are very similar because they are running on the .NET um, platform but in many many ways they are so different so for example on the languages on the left all have um, all do not have statements while languages on the right have statements statements in the sense that okay you could just have um, a, a, a while statement that doesn't really do anything or doesn't return any value whereas um all these languages on the left are all expression based so your entire application is just one huge expression that's all you know concatenated together or like put together or if, if you will um f sharp has like approximations for statements but truly in the language there are no statements so this is uh very important to keep in mind when you are learning f sharp that most of the ideas that you have in the imperative world don't really apply but in many ways, they are very, very similar. So in many ways, a lot of the things you use in .NET also carry over to F Sharp as well. So um, let's look at some of the design goals of F Sharp, right? One of the main design goals was the ability to tackle complex problems with simple, robust code. And this is really, really important because you see, one of the reasons that you know, F Sharp was created in the first place was to be able to tackle like really um complex problems uh, and you know when most people hear tackle complex problems they think that f sharp itself is complex but that is far from the truth you see to tackle complexity you can't use complexity to tackle complexity you, you need simplicity to tackle complexity so in other words in a lot of ways f sharp makes a lot of things simple just so that it can ta so it make so it makes handling um complexity easier the second reason is that it allows for the you know user to just leverage the rich ecosystem of .NET libraries and infrastructure. This is really useful because you see the .NET ecosystem is very rich and battle tested. There are so many libraries, so many um, tools built out. In fact, uh, you could even um, I think .NET Core three just came out and it's really really good and you know very fast. It runs well on Linux. It runs on all platforms. It runs on mobile. It runs on web you know so f sharp was designed to leverage all of that uh, goodness it also allows developers easily leverage con functional concept in everyday development you see there are a lot of um, ideas or a lot of techniques functional techniques that are very very useful in domain modeling in you know just writing applications on a day-to-day -day basis that um f sharp really allows developers do it's not like you can't write like functional use all these functional techniques in other languages but really it's it's a lot easier to do in f sharp without you know a language that makes it look ugly if you were to write it and say c sharp or javascript or java so um yeah why should i learn f sharp well um i, I wrote a blog post so at the bottom i also put the link in the description on eight reasons to learn F sharp. So here I explain, you know, more than what I'm going to explain in this slide, but let's just go on with it. The first reason you should learn it is, you know, simple, robust code. Um, like I said earlier, with respect to you know, being able to tackle complexity, F sharp code tends to be very simple, very, you know, straight to the point and very robust. So, um, it is a joy to to coding by the time you finally learn it and you know it's it's a it's a great language to learn because it, it teaches a lot of the functional concepts but at the same time it keeps a lot of the things that you are familiar with with programming um efficient coding like i said earlier um to be able to tackle complexity you need simplicity and one of the ways that that's done is that um f sharp doesn't really dig into the weeds in terms of um writing code or expressing concepts it is very efficient so it means you use very little 
um, essentially typing right to convey like really really to solve really really big problems and stuff like that um the dotnet core that we mentioned earlier so dotnet core is a very um, robust uh, platform and it's also cross-platform as well running on linux on um running on linux running on windows running on mac it also runs in uh, you could also use it to build games with unity you could also use it with uh, mobile apps android ios whatever and it, as you can imagine everywhere.net goes uh, f sharp goes with it everywhere.net core and .NET standard goes f sharp goes with it as well strong type safety i cannot emphasize this enough strong type safety is critical when you are building applications right especially applications that are sufficiently complex see what i said earlier about um efficiency efficient coding because you see when you have very strong type safety it saves you the hassle of having to cross check a lot of things either using tests or manually and in fact f -sharp's type safety is you know first class it's um far stronger than whatever you would get in something like c sharp for example so f -sharp could for example help you check your connection strings and all that to make sure that you know all those things are valid so that that now reduces the amount of uh, runtime errors and crashes you get so that's one of the strong points of uh, f -sharp. great tooling um f -sharp has a lot of tooling from visual studio to um vs code to jetbrains rider there are so many uh, ides and tools that you can use and it's it's really really good because of what we said about the .NET core, the dotnet ecosystem as a whole and also the fact that you know there are a lot of uh, open source and you know proprietary whatever um, ides and tools that you can use excellent community um one of the reasons that uh, is really really cool to learn f sharp is because the community is just excellent right so there are so many people who are willing to teach there is uh, if you go to f sharp.org there's a mentorship program where you can sign up for and you know you'll be um assigned a mentor and that mentor can like teach you the ropes of the language and if you have any questions you can always go to the slack and post it there and people will definitely help add functional techniques to your arsenal this is really really crucial even if you don't plan to use f sharp in your daily work maybe you're a javascript developer by day or you are i mean java developer right um, f sharp what it really gives you is it gives you a full understanding of um, functional techniques and you know today most languages are now moving towards using um adding functional technique functional um syntaxes and stuff like that to their languages things like pattern matching things like uh destruction you know object destruct destru uh, destructuring and all that right so if you were to learn f sharp you would learn all those um techniques up front and by the time it gets into your language like c sharp or javascript or whatever you would be able to fully grasp and understand those ideas you know in a, in a much deeper level than is presented on the surface as well also when i say functional techniques there are some algorithms there are some uh, problems that are easier to solve when you use a functional approach to them because you see functional techniques are similar to the way we humans think as opposed to um the way computers think thank you for watching so um hopefully i hope you learned something um in the next couple of videos we will go straight into um learning the language but i hope i've been able to convince you you know to give f sharp a try and if you are interested there will be subsequent videos in this channel where you can watch and you know learn the language um so thank you for watching see you next time